Good morning, Gear 5s. It is another week. It's another home learning week. And it is another Monday. So, let's get cracking. This week for maths, we're going to be looking at something a little bit new. I thought, you know, we've done a lot, we've done a lot of recap and we've done a lot of, um, you know, retrieval, connecting those parts of our brain, building the memory up. But I wanted to actually look at something new this week. So make sure you use these videos however you want to use them, but you might want to refer to them this week a bit more if you've not been. Um, so I'll have a quick look at the do nows first. Nothing's changed on here. So move this down, move that down. Here we go. Oh, I've run it really tiny today. Um, so, first one, round in nearest 10, 12,617. Well, there's your 1, there's your 10. Nearest 10, well, actually, what, 17. We know that's closest to 20. But your 10 is the 1. 7 rounds up. So, 12,620. Oh, I've put the equal sign wrong. Sorry, there you go. Nearest 100. Well, there's your 100. So, 617. Well, we know that's closer to 600 than 700, 12,600. Um, nearest thousand. Well, there's our thousand. 2,617. Look at the number four, six. It's higher than five, so it rounds up. So it rounds that number up. So it's 3,000. Sorry, I've written this really small today for some reason. I don't know why. And I've also run out of room for this question. Dear me. Bit of estimating, but I've thrown division in there now, okay? So 134 divided by 12. Ooh. Well, we could start thinking that it's near some of the numbers in our multiples of the 12s. We've got 132, could be 11. Well, let's round that down to 10. Instantly makes 13.4, doesn't it? If you round by, divide by 10, it's going to be around 13.4, and you could round that to 13. So you could say, oh, I'm going I'm to go 13. Or, because you've rounded down, you could actually put a bit more on and say, actually, I think it's probably more like 14. It, it's completely up to you. Um, and then this one here, £34.67 times 6. Well, round that up to 10. It's going to be 346. I would, but to be fair, rounding up from 6 to 10... It's quite a lot. So, you know, you can put, I think it's going to be 346, but it's not a very round number. Same with this one here. So I would put, you know, I think my answer is going to be 13. And with this one here, you probably, could, 6 is a big jump to 10. I would probably, I'd probably say that's, your estimate's fine to be 300 there. Okay. Because you've got so many more. What I would do is I would work that answer out. And then um, see see how close it is. But I, I would I would round that just down to three hundred. But it does get tricky if they're quite big jumps away from a ten. Can be you, you've got to bear in mind how far away it would have been. Uh, twenty three centimeters. Into meters. Well, that's going to be zero point two three meters because we're thinking how many centimeters in a meter. We know there's a hundred centimeters in a meter. We need to do something with a hundred. We're either going to multiply, which is going to make it 2,300, or we're going to divide, which makes it 0 0.23. Common sense of math, 0 0.23 centimetres in a metre. 12 centimetres into millimetres. Again, there are 10 millimetres in one centimetre. So you've either got to times by 10 and make it 120, or divide, which is 1.2. Well, 12 centimetres can't be 1.2 millimetres, because millimetres are smaller than centimetres. So it's got to be 120. 0 0.03, 3%, 75%. .3, a test of your um, number facts here, you should just know that 75% is 0 0.75. And then at the bottom here, half is equivalent to, well, if the denominator is 12, the numerator is going to be 6. And then... A new section of do nows is the three 2D and 3D shapes. So, oh, it's chopped off the word triangle, hasn't it? What is the total angle in, of the interior angles of any triangle? Uh, you should know that that is 180 degrees. We've done lots of angle work. Draw a polygon. 
Right, don't forget a polygon is anything that is closed and has straight lines. Boom, there's your polygon. You could also get very simple, you could have drawn a square. Okay. Uh, how many lines of symmetry does an equilateral triangle have? Well, I don't expect you to start drawing out an equilateral triangle and trying to, to, to sort it out. But if you don't know, you might have to. It's very hard to get an equilateral triangle. But if something's got three equal sides, then it's going to have three lines of symmetry. Okay. Again, it's one of those and it's one of those annoying bits of maths where you've just actually got to know that. Okay, it's not one of those things where you can sit and work it out. You can do, but you could just start drawing lines anyway. You've got to try and remember that an equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry because there are three equal sides to it. Right, on to this next bit. I'm going to hopefully have a look at something a little new, which I'm excited about. So I do really like this area of maths, along with angles and everything else. But I do like a little bit of coordinate work. I'm just going to check that. Yeah, I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit more. Ooh, it's a bit tinier, isn't it? Right. So, oh, we'll leave it there. That's fine. We're going to have a look at potting coordinates in the first quadrant. You'll notice at the top there, it just it says first quadrant. A quadrant, well, quad means four. So you may be looking at that and wondering, oh, hang on a minute, there's only there's only there's just one. What what do you mean quadrants here? Later on in the week, we're going to discover why the why it's called a quadrant. Okay, because there are actually four of these in 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 one uh, graph. Uh, so we're going to look at the first quadrant, and the first quadrant is the is the one you should recognise. You know, you should have seen this from from year one. You know, you've got an x axis and a y axis. You might it might have been a pictogram where you you know you you put uh, pictures of ice creams, pictures of crisps, uh, or it might have been you know a bar chart. So um, so this many children in the class have have brown hair. This many children in the class, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so this first quadrant you've been working in for years. All right, you also have been using coordinates before. In year one and year two, you might have been doing it on treasure maps. And you might have been looking inside the boxes, doing map work in lower key stage two, maybe year three and four. You might have been using the boxes and finding what's in, in the grid, you know, like a grid reference on a map. But coordinates can be in the box or on the line, okay? And we're going to be focusing on them being on the lines, okay? Um, so there's lots of intersections here where, where you can have an X cross with a Y, okay? So, just a reminder, whenever you look at a graph, and especially with coordinates, you go along the X axis first, and then you go up the Y, okay? Now, later on in the week, the directions may change, but you always go along the X, so you always go along here first, okay? That is the thing you need to remember for today. Okay, always the X first. It's it's before Y in the alphabet, so simple as that. X then Y. So you walk to the stairs before you can go up them. Okay, loads of different ways to remember. Me personally, X comes before Y in the alphabet. You can or you can you have to walk before you can go up the stairs. Okay. So, first task: Can you write the coordinates for the points given? So I've given you the coordinates here. The yellow is my example. I hope that's yellow. I think that's not my colour blindness kicking in. Um, the yellow is my example, which would be 1, 6. I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. Ooh, that was weird. Ugh. So, you'll notice the first number is 1 and the second is 6. The first number is, I've just said, we go on the X first. So our first number is 1, our second number is 6. So the X, 1, Y, 6. So underneath, you, you know, that's the X and that's the Y. The reason it's in brackets is if you have a list of them. Normally in a list we use commas, don't we? But you imagine that we have 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6. Where's the coordinate stop? So the brackets help group it together. It's, it's, it's kind of like a parenthesis in English. You, it groups the, the bit of information together. So your first one is 1, 6. So do the rest. 
I'll give you an answer to a couple of these. X first, then Y. So that should be 5, 2. And that should be written 5, 2 in brackets. This one here should be 4, 9. Obviously brackets, 4, 9. That one should be 9, 8. This one here, try to trick you here, this one is going to be 12, 0, uh, yeah, 12, 0. Now, I've got one pet peeve with this grid, but I couldn't find, oops, just drawn on my screen, but I couldn't find a, a, a better one. The 0 should be kind of like, actually, the 0 should be drawn like, on all four, on that intersection. So zero should be here. I don't like that it's there. So it's 12, zero. Okay, because you've not gone up to any of them. So that should be 12, zero. And then the last one, 13, 14. Job's done. Two, if there are six points, if there are six points coordinate that doesn't make sense, sorry. If there are six, that should be the other way around. There, if there are six coordinate points in total, what type of shape would this be? So, if there are six coordinate points, when you draw them up, however you draw them up, you, know, you could draw them that way, that way, that way, that way, however you do it, there are six corners, which means there are six sides. So this is gonna be an irregular hexagon. All the sides are different lengths. Angles are definitely not the same. So it's an irregular hexagon. Okay. So, on to the challenges. Predict the coordinates to draw a square, a number seven, and the first letter of your name. Now, I want it to be predict. All right. A little bit like computing here. You know, you have to predict lines of code before you make it. Well, let's, let's use the same concept here. Let's try and picture in our minds where the coordinates would be. Now a square didn't say how big and small they had to be. You could you could be a, you could cheat a little bit here and you could draw a square that is literally a square. Ooh. But you've still got to have the coordinates correct. So that one require that one's going to require four coordinates, obviously because there's four corners. But they've got to be equally apart. Okay, otherwise you've got a rectangle going. So make sure that it is a square. So it's two by two by two by, it's two by two, or it's three, 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 or it's 10, 10, 10, 10. It's gotta be the same all the way around. The number seven, uh, you, can ha you could probably get away with having three, couldn't you? As long as you have like one, two, and then you work out how to get a th like a third one down here somewhere. And then the rest of your name, well, you're gonna have to have a bit of a boxed name, aren't you? So mine would be M, not for Mr, for Michael, obviously. So I would have one there, one there, and then I'd have kind of one here, one here, and then one down there. Um, if it's an S, you might have to have a bit more of a, well, I don't know, you could have a diagonal, I suppose, but you'd probably have more of a, it's gotta be straight lines, obviously. Um, you can have curved lines on, on graphs, but this, this is plotting coordinates. The second challenge that I've got for you, I'm going to show you a little trick. Because if you're finding it a little hard, and actually this works for the other one. If you're finding it a bit hard to imagine where they would be, first of all, give it a go. Because we would have done this in class anyway. But if you're finding it really hard to, to, to picture and remember where the coordinates are, and especially for things like this, so what shape have I drawn here? So first of all, three coordinates, so three corners. That's gonna be a triangle of some sort, isn't it? And then, you know, the letter here, one, two, three, four, five. I don't, I don't know what letter that's gonna be. So, well, I know, obviously, but when you look at it, there's no clue. Whereas when it shapes, three coordinates, four coordinates are gonna be quadrilateral, five coordinates are gonna be a pentagon of some sort. If you can't remember, ask your parents if it's okay, because um, depends what device you're using, but I had an idea. If you get a very, 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 you can't even see it's that tiny. Very, very. I'm gonna have to. Oh dear. I'm gonna have to do like that. Very, very tiny piece of blue tack. Where's my finger gone? Ah. Very, very tiny piece of blue tack. You can plot it on the screen. 
So five two. Oh, there's already a block. Ah, there's a five two. I've helped you out with there. Five nine. And it's a bit like playing battleships. There you go. So now I've got that one and that one, and I could get another bit of blue tack. What other, what else what did I need? Oh, if you move the screen, oh, if you move the screen, it's going to go into it. seven five. Another tiny bit. Seven five is going to be there. So now my letter goes like that, and you can do that. So, and hopefully when you take the blue tack off, there is no mark on your screen. So when doing coordinates today, if you've got a little bit of blue tack somewhere, use a bit of blue tack. If you haven't, if you can find any sort of like sticker or something that, that you know won't get stuck to the screen, don't go drawing on your screen. That might just help you out, okay? If not, you might have to just do a couple of fingers, all right? But these challenges are actually to make you picture where they'd go, all right? So, you know, I've not given it yet and it's awkward to do. You've got, to, you've, it's a bit of predicting. Also in this box here, I found you some really cool games. Oh, well, I just said really cool, which instantly makes it not cool, doesn't it? Um, speed coordinates, which is this one here. Um, so show the coordinates, click on the arrow here. For this one, I want you to click on this first quadrant, okay? We'll explore these ones later in the week, but click on the first quadrant, the one that you recognize. And then it's simply, you've got to do it as fast as you can. Eight, two, uh, three, nine. Uh, ooh, panic! And it's definitely timing me. Three, five, uh, zero, zero, one, uh, seven, four. Notice I'm going to the X every time. Zero, six, uh, two, eight. Can I get all of them? Six, two. Ah, one, zero. Uh, seven, nine. Uh, nine, three. Mm. Seven, one, two, two, five, one, four, eight. Yes! Whoa, how stressful. And the other game, Alien Invasion, again, first quadrant. Oh, whoa, don't go on the internet with me, computer. So, play game. Ooh, a little hint to the four quadrants there. When this one loads up, press play. Again, you want first quadrant for today. Okay, don't go into there. I, we need to talk about it. First quadrant. And then you have to put the alien coordinates. One, three, fire your rocket. Got it. Eight, eight. So it's kind of like... Sorry, I've got into the game now. It was a nine, zero. It's kind of like Battleship. Seven, zero. Anyway. I got distracted. So, hope you enjoy that. Little bit of new maths to have a look at. And well, that shouldn't actually, to, that shouldn't be new today. Um, but the rest of the week will be. And we're going to move to something called translation of shapes, which basically means moving shapes. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got on well with that. And do have a look at those games because they are genuinely quite good to do. Okay. And they'll be, they'll really get your pace going ready for this week. Brilliant, guys. Well done.